Shalom, Kala Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Kor Kadash. Double honors, my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect for the house of David be born again in this generation. And Shalom to the 130 Yashurala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, who before losing their true heritage were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about Iran's new elected president. But let's read this first. This is Joel 3 and 10. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. So on the 19th, just a few days ago, it tells you, it says, hardline cleric Ibrahim Brasi wins Iran presidential election by a landslide. Now, this man here, yes, he was elected by the 34% of Iran that voted for him. Um, you know, or, or he was he was elected by a majority of the 34,000 people who had voted for him. But the thing is, is for the most part, this man here was put into the power seat to run Iran for the next few years. Now, why is that? Well, you see this man, before we get into the article, let me just kind of break it down. Uh, he is a popular figure in Iran for being a hard ass, right? For being a, a, a hardliner, as it says, right? A hardline cleric. Now, this man here is the true power behind him, Ayatollah Khomeini, okay? He is the real leader of Iran as far as, like, policy, the figurehead and everything. The military force is really the, the true power. However, this man, Ayatollah Khomeini, for the most part, steers the military, for the most part. Now, that being said, he has selected this man, Ibrahim Rasi, to be the president. Now, why is that? Well, because this man, he has an agenda, uh, or he's going, going along with the agenda of the Lord. That being to bring America and its allies, namely the land of Israel, right? The Amalekites who dwell on that land into a third war war, okay? These people here, they are ready for war. They're not ready to talk peace. They're done with peace. They made it very clear, even though the news here in Babylon the Great, which is what America is called in the Bible, tries to skew the truth and try to make it, makes it seem like uh, peace with Iran is still possible. And uh, But it's, again, that ship has sailed. Now they are simply biding their time and racing to complete their nuclear armory, which people have already said they have already built up, right? And uh, and this is why they are taking a strong approach, people say. But let's go and just read this article and we'll break into a little bit more about who this man is and just how the, the Western powers, the, the Edomite nations of the world, see this man, right? Now, this man, again, before we continue, he is what you would know as a Persian, right? Uh, the Iranians today come out of the um, out of the 18 nations of the world, the, bi the biblical 18 nations, that is, he would be referred to as the, uh, out of the nation of Persia, okay? But let's read. It says, Iran's hardline candidate, Ibrahim Rossi, who is a conservative head of the judiciary and considered a close ally of Ayatollah, the Ayatollah, has been announced the winner of the Islamic Republic's presidential election. Iran state media is calling it a landslide. Also, as in, as international reports spotlight the very low voter turnout, Iran's press TV writes of the results. According to the preliminary results, with around 90% of the votes counted, Rossi garnered over 17.8 million votes, followed by Mohsin Rizari, who s secured 3.3 million. He says he's headed up. He's headed up Iran's powerful judiciary since 2019, and further as an influential cleric, 
has held multiple other low, lower of, of offices since the 1979 Islamic Revolution. Okay, now if you're not sure what the Islamic Revolution is, uh, back uh, a long time ago, you had America infiltrate uh, Iran, okay? And you had this man called the Shah of, of Iran. Let's see. Okay, oh, no, that's not it. Well, you had a, you had, here you go. You had this man here, the Shah of Iran. And here's another picture of him, right? He was the puppet uh, presidential elect um, and, and his wife, uh, who basically were put into power by the secret powers of the United States for the most part, okay? He, uh, what America did through the CIA is they um, de dispo deposed the um, biblical, I'm sorry, the democratically elected president of Iran, whose name was Mozadek, okay? And uh, when they did this, they uh, they brought this guy um, in, right? Basically, the corrupted officials of Iran uh, voted for this man to come in, and he was corrupt as hell, right? He killed off many, many of the uh, loyal Iranian politicians, right? And basically, Iran had been handed over to the uh, Western powers for the most part to control uh, their oil, um, their oil reserves, right? Now. Well, the Shah of Iran, his wife, and you got uh, President Lyndon B. Johnson. But for the most part, what happened is Iran basically kicked this guy out. Right? He, they gave this man the boot, and they were going to kill him, but he fled uh, Iran. And what happened is because that man, the Shah of Iran, was so corrupt and he killed off many of his political uh, um, um, enemies, right? which would have been political leaders of Iran, when he left, the only people that were able to run the, uh, the government of Iran or the people of Iran was basically the cleric majority, right? This is the only group of people that had had been left alone for the most part uh, and was still a, a vestige of the Iranian, um, you know, uh, land. Now, if you're un uncertain, this was this is what Iran looked like um, before. Okay, Iran used to be a westernized country or westernized style country, right? This is how they all looked like back then. Okay, they had Mustangs. They were living a nice, what you would call modernistic life back in the 70s. You know, you had women dressing modernly, men in suits, you know, women in pants and, you know, going to school, all this stuff, right? This was Iran. But since the powers that came in, into, into control, you now had them pushing up forward the Islamic um, um, rituals and laws uh, across the land, right? And this was all done again because the... Um, the Shah, who <laughs> tells you here, January 16th, 1979, the Shah of Iran flees to Egypt, opening the door for the Islamic Revolution, right? And this is where these men come in, they take over, and they start putting uh, down Islamic law, and hence turning the liberal Iranian population into what you see today, uh, a religious backed sect uh, um, that controls Iran, right? This is why Ayatollah Hermini, um, Hermini, Hermini uh, runs the, go the government, right? And this is why they're, uh, they're ruling this place. So again, that's the long story of why they're in power like that is because again, Esau meddled with that government trying to take it over and it backfired and now it's coming back to bite him in the ass. Now, that being said, Let's go and read what the world what the world thinks of this man that's been elected and why it is bad news for the Edomites, right? The so-called Caucasian race, which the Bible uh, prophesies would be in rulership 
in the end days before the second coming of the Messiah and who would fall into a third world war, which would include the likes of Iran, Russia, and China coming up against America. Well, uh, this is what the Associated Press says about this man. It says, Iran's president-elect takes hard line and refuses to meet with Biden. Right? See, this man here, he doesn't want to talk to Biden about, um, about the nuclear deal. Right? This is why when this man comes in on August, uh, you know, um, he's get, you're going to totally see a, a, a totally separate uh, position that Iran's going to take. They're not going to seek to talk to Biden about recreating the, um, the, the nuclear arms deal that they had, right? This man here himself said that the deal's been made and that is what it is, and that America got to live by its commitments. And again, and if you know how these Edomites perform, they never keep any of their, of their uh, deals. Right? Just ask the Native American Indians who are known as the tribe of Gad in the Bible. Right? who are the, one of the 12 tribes of Israel. And it says here, Iran's new president-elect, Ibrahim Rossi, speaks during a press conference in Tehran, Iran. Rossi said Monday he wouldn't meet with President Joe Biden in order to negotiate over Tehran's ballistic missile program and its support of regional militias. St sticking to a hardline position following his landslide victory in the last week's election. Right? And it just goes to show you, man, that these people are done talking to America. They're done trying to make friends with the Western power, right? They don't want to have anything to do with um, with Esau, right? Because again, the reason why this man here, again, he also has called for the destruction of the of the nation of Israel, the Amalekites who are in that land, because he says that they are. He understands that they are not the true Jews. He understands that they are the imposters, and that they shouldn't exist. Okay. Now, that being said, tells Reuters reports that Israel says Iran's Rossi is an extreme, extreme committed, is extremely committed to nuclear program, meaning that they know that this man's going to pursue that to develop Iran's nuclear program and get it completed. Right? And why is that? Why is that a big issue for Israel? Well, Israel, the people who are in that land right now who are pretending to be the true Jews, who are in fact the Edomites the Bible speaks of, um, they understand the Bible and they understand prophecy. They know that the Lord will raise up the Iranians to come up against them along with these other nations. And this is why they're trying to, this is why they're surrounding the nation of Iran with all the military bases of America because they're getting ready for World War III. Now, this is Jeremiah 1545. Therefore, hear ye the counsel of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai that he hath taken against Babylon, right? Babylon being America, and his purposes that he hath proposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Right? The land of the Chaldeans, again, is referring, is another way that the Lord refers to the Americans, because again, the Americans and the elites here, they're in fact witches. They are high level magicians who perform satanic rituals, and this is how they get their spiritual power. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their inhabitants desolate with them. So what this is talking about, the least of the flock are these so-called Jews, these Israelis who are in the land, right? They are the least of the flock that will, that the Bible prophesies will start World War III and will draw the, the Edomites here in Babylon the Great, in the land of the Chaldeans, out and basically bring them to war, right? Because what's going to happen is just like what we're seeing now where Israel or the Israelis are bombing everybody, they will eventually bomb Iran, right? They've said for the longest time, and everybody knows it, if you're into politics, you know that Iran is just biting at the bit to uh, bomb Iran. And America, along with a lot of the American allies, are doing everything they can to stop Iran from uh, uh, engaging Iran, okay? Or Israel, from stopping Israel from engaging Iran, okay? It's a lot. This is Jeremiah 1520. We're going to start at 1522. A sound of battle is in the land and of great destruction. 
How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How has Babylon become a desolation amongst the nations? Right, you see this because right here, Jeremiah seen a vision where America, which is referred to here as the hammer of the whole earth, has been destroyed, right? He's seen a future prophecy showing that this great power, this great nation that had basically kept the whole world under subjection, just like as if you look at America now, it has conquered the whole world through its politics, its military might, its economic power, right? Its political influence, right? It's it, who, which keeps hammering the, the whole world it has been cut asunder and broken, right? Continuing. I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou wast not aware. Thou art found and also caught, because thou hast striven against Yahweh Bashim al Shai. You see, and the Lord right now, he is setting up a trap for these uh, for these Edomites, man, right? All the things that they think that they're doing, that they're going to succeed in winning World War III, that they're going to weaken their, their enemies. Right? In fact, what's happening is that the Lord is, in fact, setting up a trap for these Americans, these Edomites, and he's going to eventually catch them. And they're going to be caught unaware. Right? And, they're, and that's going to ultimately result in the destruction of Babylon. Right? Babylon is going to be broken down and made a desolation amongst the world. And because, why is the Lord going to do this? Well, because how he has promised to destroy the nation of Edom for ultimately they have come up and destroyed his people the Israelites the Negro Latinos and Native Indians and they to this day have the Israelites us in captivity right? and they're not letting us go right um, verse 25 Yahweh Bashi hath opened his armory and hath brought forth the weapons of his indignation for this is the work of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Ashai of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans. Right? And what is the Lord's armory? What is he opening up? His, his vast collection of weapons that he's letting out? Well, that would be the nuclear weapons that will come out during World War III that will ultimately destroy America and what will create what John the Baptist uh, or John the Revelator, excuse me, seen and referred to as the lake of fire, right? These are the weapons of the Lord's indignation. Now, the Lord has allowed humanity to figure this information out, either by giving certain scientists epiphanies and revelations that they needed to know, so that way they could find the, the, the you know, how to split the atom, which then created the, the atomic bomb, which then led to the nuclear bomb, and so on and so on. Right? These are in fact the works of the Lord which he has given into the hands of man so that way he can then be, use them for, to destroy, that way Esau can destroy himself. That's another way that the Lord has laid a snare for, for these Edomites. Man, he has let them believe that they have discovered nuclear weapons on their own. But in fact, he, the Lord himself has allowed them, John Oppenheimer, for example, on the Philadelphia Project, project to discover nuclear weaponry because ultimately that will be their own destruction. Come against her from the uttermost border, open her storehouses, cast her up as heaps, and destroy her utterly. Let nothing of her be left. Slay all her bullocks, let them go down to the slaughter. Woe unto them, for the day is come the time of their visitation, right? The voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of Yahweh Shai, our power, the vengeance of his temple. Right? And the Lord is ultimately going to do this to pay back uh, Edom for what they have done to the nation of Israel. Now, now, I'm not talking about the people who are currently living in the land of Israel. I'm talking about the nation of Israel. Remember, it, it, the, the name Israel is a people before it's the place, okay? And that right there means that the Lord is going to do this to the Edomites for what they did to the Negro, Latinos, and Native Indians, and anybody whose father's lineage goes back to that bloodline. 
right? So I just wanted to touch upon this all here. I wanted to show you how the Lord is again uh, moving his chess pieces into play, into place by electing Ibrahim Rasi. And again, how that ultimately is bad news for these Edomites. So with all that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Kwa Pradash, double honors my teachers, the apostles and the elders of the Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.